God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, because he won't give up on you. He's able Just what he said he will do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. He's a started in you he's able 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 he is your strength he is your joy he is your love one more time he's able 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 He's able. He's able. God. And God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up. One more time, don't give up on God, no. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. He's able. God, we just thank you, Lord, that you are able to do above and beyond what we're hoping and asking for, God. I've seen you move. You move the mountains, and I believe I'll see you do it again. You made a way when there was no way, and I believe I'll see you. I've seen you, I've seen you move. You move the mountains, and I believe. I see you do it again. You made a way when there was no way. And I believe I see you do it again. Walking around these walls. I thought by now they'd fall. But you have never failed me yet If you're waiting for change to come Waiting for change to come But this is what we know Knowing the battle's won My heart will sing And my heart will sing your praise again your promise still stands your promise still stands great is your faithfulness oh your faithfulness i'm still in your hands i'm still in your hands this is my confidence 
One more time, your promise still stands. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Oh, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me yet. You never fail me yet. This is my confidence, my confidence, my confidence. Oh, you never fail me yet. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we can place our confidence in you, oh God. We thank you, Father, that you are faithful, Lord. You have never failed. You cannot fail, Lord. It's not in your nature to fail. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you, God, are faithful. You are trustworthy, God. You are tried and you are true. Lord, new mercies you deposit into our, our, our bank accounts, if you will, every day. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are with us, that you are for us, oh Lord. Father, we thank you that we can cast all of our cares upon you because you care for us. We are not alone. Jesus, you are Emmanuel. You are God with us. You are with us, Lord, in the hills. You are with us in the valleys. God, you're with us in isolation and you're with us, Lord, in the joyful times. Jesus, we just want to say we love you today. We praise you, God. We honor you. We adore you, God. We thank you, God, that you have done it before. You will do it again. We worship you for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, welcome to Midday. I am Pastor Dana Williams. I'm one of the camp or one of the pastors here at the Kempsville campus. And I'm super excited today to have with us some incredible ladies um, joining us for our table talk. And today we are going to have a conversation for moms, for parents, for grandparents, for anyone out there who might be homeschooling your children or schooling at home, as we should say. Um, and you're having some challenges. Maybe this has been a rough season for you. And we want to be able to encourage you today, share some tricks of the trade, if you will, some things that we're doing, some challenges that we're having in our own families, and just be of an encouragement to you. So I want to start off by just introducing our panel today. We have the beautiful Rebecca Miller. This is Pastor Jeremy's wife, and so Rebecca is with us today. We've got Avery Solomon, love Avery, awesome Adrian. This is Pastor Joel's wife, and then over here we have Adrian Coventry, homegirl. That's what I think about when I think of you. This is Adrian. This is Pastor Liam's wife. And then over here, my good girlfriend, Kelly Gossman. And this is Pastor Jeff Gossman's wife. So this is a power panel. And I was thinking, ladies, between the five of us, we have 19 children. 19 children. So... 
<laughs> the Tuckers, yes. So we've got, and the, um, the interesting thing too is we have 19 kids, but we also have um, kids that like Rebecca, your baby is what, like five months? Six months. Yeah. Six months. Six so months. from six months up to, I have a 20, almost 21 year old. Mm -hmm. So we've got, you know, from babes all the way up to adult kids and everything in between. And um, we've got some experience. Um, and we also, like I said, none of us are experts. So we're in this, this thing with you. Um, some of the challenges that you're facing, we're also facing. So so I want to start off by saying, Kelly, since I'm looking at you, what, what has been your biggest challenge in this whole season of schooling your kids at home? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I think just the loss of our normal routine has been a, a challenge. You know, it's kind of, it, I was talking to a friend yesterday, it feels like it's been one long day and we don't have things necessarily that are punctuating our schedule, you know, like a, a spring break trip or going to see family or something, we're just home. And so uh, that's kind of been an adjustment for us, just learning to really slow down and be at home and, um, I was reminded of a phrase that Spurgeon used a while ago. He talked about hearth and home. And I've just been like, Lord, let this be a season where we're just enjoying the blessings of hearth and home. Whatever that looks like, uh, there's challenges with it too. But I think that's been a big, just a big change is um, mm -hmm. being home all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about you ladies? What, what's been like your biggest challenge? Rebecca, what about you? I think, um, I think looking inward during these times, you know, you, you feel like you have it together, but then I think it's T.D. Jakes that says um, the, uh, that love, that family is the gymnasium for love to be worked out in. And so you're in your house and you're faced with people that, you know, are, that you're familiar with. And so, you know, you're more prone for things to come out during this time. And so I think all my lack of perfections um, during this time has been, you know, has been pressed out, you know, has been um, exposed. And so it's just a time where, um, for me, the challenge is is leaning into his grace and kind of grasping those fresh mercies every morning, you know, and walking into that. So, yeah. Um, yeah. so it's a good. journey. It's a yes. journey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what about you, Avery? Did you say what or who? Because I could tell you who has been my challenge in my <laughs> not, family. Not Pastor no. Joel, not him. <laughs> oh, yeah, him too. No, he's, <laughs> we're good there. Um, well, I have a three-year-old and then a first and a second grader and a f fourth grader. And um, I would say the natural rhythms because my three-year-old was going to preschool three days a week. Yeah. And um, that was four hours, three days a week. I knew that like chocolate wasn't going to be getting gotten into and lotion wasn't going to be squeezed out and messes weren't going to be made that were unplanned. And so that, um, that rhythm has changed. And I was homeschooling one of my children at the time and two were at the public school. So we were very scattered and starting in January and we did that for two months and we were getting a really good rhythm and then it all halted. Mm. And so it's not that I'm unaccustomed for my kids being home because I have been a homeschooler mother at some times, but this is not homeschooling. And this is, um, we called it, what do we call it? Crisis schooling at home. And particularly if your kid is at a different school, not at home, you're being forced under those terms to accommodate those deadlines and all the things. So the challenge is figuring out the three-year-old while meeting the needs of the kids and um, not losing it. And when I do lose it, regrouping quickly yeah. and um, a lot of forgiveness and a lot of I'm sorry. And um, so those are just, and then, you know, I'm up in the night because my toddler doesn't want to sleep through the night. So then I'm tired on top of that. And I'm sure new moms and all, you know, we're facing all that stuff. So I have the who's and the what's the of, um, the what's. I love that. <laughs> of my challenges. Adrian. Yeah. In agreement, just the structure has changed. Uh, I think we thrive with boundaries and it doesn't feel like there's many of them right now. So I think everyone can kind of feel um, like a loose cannon at times, emotionally, physically. Um, there's just, there's, there's nothing that's familiar or certain. And um, I think that creates a lot of um, 
yeah, different. We have, we have good days that are like, wow, there's freedom, there's flexibility and it's beautiful. And there are days you're like, wow, we have freedom and flexibility and I don't know what to do with it. And so I think, you know, I have three um, children, they're third grade, fifth grade and sixth grade. They go to a private school in the area. And so their structure has changed. They're busy. They, they go to school, they play sports, they have friendships, you know, friend play dates all of the time. And all of those things have been stripped from them as well as I don't, I'm not going to work. And so, you know, my husband's schedule is shifted. So everything is just kind of, um, there's, there's just no structure to it. So I think that's been uh, one of the biggest challenges is, are we supposed to fill it? Do we, do they have bedtimes right now? Do they, do we make them get up at a certain hour? Do we just let them sleep in because this is the luxury of what we have right now? Or, you know, I, so I think it's hard to, for me to navigate what should happen right now and what's okay not to happen right now. Yeah, that's such a good point. I think for me, that's kind of where those would be my challenges. Somebody um, actually asked, Felisa asked, um, what advice would you give for teenagers who love to sleep all day and night if possible? And I'm like, girl, I can relate, you know, because my, well, I won't say which kid it is, but one of my wonderful children, yeah, it's like summer vacation. And I'm like, hello, like we've got schoolwork, we've got things that we need to do. Um, so I've just been piling on the chores for my kids, you know, yeah. like you have so much extra time on your hands, you know, you can get up on that roof and clean those gutters but no I'm kidding but the point is is that like you know as as many of you have said it's kind of been that loss of um, routine and helping the kids to know like technically you guys are still in school um, I think a lot of us have a mix like I have a mix of um, I have my daughter who's in private school and then my little boys who are in public school um, and so there's different um, the I guess the um, rigor of their academics are different and so you know some kids feel like oh well this kid you know it's not fair because they have this much much work or I have too much work and so trying to kind of referee between those two different school systems but um, Felisa I would say my advice to you is just to try to get your child that teenage child on some sort of schedule um, I do think there's flexibility like we were even chatting before we, we went live um, with I'm choosing to be more flexible with my kids in this season so what do you ladies have to say about that like you're not just like let's put school aside but what about just your home rules you know kind of what you do at home outside of school has that been the same or have you found that you've been given more flexibility in those situations as well well I'll share just real quick I do think um I've always made a joke ever since kids have come into our life and then tacked on more um it's always a new normal and then once that normal gets normalized like another season changes and I think at this point when the kids first got you know, school shut down and it was like two weeks and a little unknown. It was like totally new and exciting and we weren't sure and it was unknown. Now we know this is longer. This is a season. And um, if there is no structure and no new normal that is now being created in your, our new environment and restrictions and lack of boundaries and all that, I think it's not sustainable. Yeah. And, and then if you think, how long can we go with no purpose in the day or feeling like we're not feeling accomplished as us as individuals? I think even from the young ages, kids want that feeling purposeful for the day. What, what are certain things that I feel good about that I've accomplished in different ways? And so I think that looking at it as a new normal. So some kids maybe didn't have to help out as much at home because they were out of the home a lot. Yeah. And when kids are home a lot, there's a lot of movement of items in your home. <laughs> a little yeah. bit. Yeah. yeah. I, love, I love how you put I that. I swear I put that <laughs> right there. Where is that and why is it not there? Items. There's a lot. Of, that's I say Items are moving and shifting all day long. So now we are, our new normal is we are all figuring out how to return these items back to their yes. original. If they had a, and they don't have original location, we got to talk about something else, <laughs> which I have a lot of that problem too. But um, I just think creating new normal. So I always had in my mind that we were going to do certain chores and certainly kids, you know, make beds and blah, blah, blah. But like, no, we have identified new things and we are, and sure, there's some positive reinforcement. We went and got Chick-fil-A milkshakes last night for a couple kids. Some kids want a little earned money, you know, whatever it is, just trying to incentivize some certain things, positive rewards. Yeah. My daughter, I didn't realize, but she loves doing the dishwasher. So mm. at 7 a.m., she's awesome. down emptying the dishwasher, but she feels accomplished. Yeah. You know, not everyone's wired like that. We have yeah. sons that are not wired like that or vice versa. So, or, or girls too. I'm not saying that was a that was not a boy girl thing. But anyway, so I do think it's important we start. Now we know this is going longer than the first two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. We've got to create a season of something that is a little more sustainable and recognizing the new things that are happening at our home yeah. and figuring out how we can all get on board and create some teamwork mm -hmm. with it. Yeah. So that's something new. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. I think, too, 
moms are wired differently, you know, and we're in an age where you'll look at so social platforms and, oh, this mom is doing it this way. And, and so I think I'm such, personally, I'm, I'm just, I'm a free flow. Let's go with the flow. Let's see what, where things um, lead us. And, and I've had to shift that way. And, you know, we're going to try, we get up, we try and do um, homeschool work. And then for some kids, you know, it'll take, you know, like one of my sons, it'll take, you know, give me all the pages, give me, you know, it, it'll take 30 minutes. And then the other one, it could take hours and hours. And so we have to, I think we're in unusual times. We have to just figure out what works for you. You know, if you're not so structured, you know, if my goal is to get the work done by the end of the day, whatever's on that Monday list, I need to get it done. You know, it may take six hours for some, it may take, you know, an hour for for the other so I think yeah. just being just giving yourself grace and yeah I love that Rebecca I think I remember when I were you gonna say something Adrian you just jump right in there yeah, girl I was just gonna yeah you just jump right in I think you know I think it's okay that you know that we don't have to I don't know, put these pressures even on ourselves I even as I'm evaluating my children and their responses to things um you know there's again there's days that you're like man I was like Proverbs 31 lady and like I rocked it and then the next day I'm like well they all need therapy after this you know that's real <laughs> and so you know and lo again lots of uh, I'm sorry's and yeah. um, and then there you know so I have to remember like if I'm feeling those days like the days that I'm like super mom and then the days where I'm like epic fail I think we have to remember they're having those too and so I think so there I for us I've feel like there's just there's no formula and that's okay because I think if we're looking for a formula and if there was one we'd all be doing it um, and the reality is every family is uniquely wired and every personality is uniquely wired uh, every mom uh, parents differently and, th and that's okay like um, some may be really calm some may be a little bit more expressive um, and so you know that's just the way it goes right and and I think so I guess what I'm getting at is I know that there's days that I feel like this has been like such a gift from the Lord uh, where it's like there's just time and cuddles and and then there's days where I'm like no one can keep their hands off of each other everyone's fighting there's tears that don't even uh, aren't even equivalent to whatever the situation was but I feel the same way like there's days where I have felt that way like that this is okay days I feel like I'm on top of it and then there's days where I'm like I don't have this and that and that's okay so I think we have to give ourselves permission as well as our children that it may not be every day at 8 a.m. you know breakfast has already been served and it's a freshly, you know, cooked meal. And um, I mean, I feel like I'm washing dishes on stop. You know, there's laundry everywhere. Like you said, everybody's moving. Nobody leaves my house anymore. So there's stuff everywhere and, yeah. and that's okay. Like it's, it's okay. I think we have to have grace for the moment and realize that this situation is very unique from anything any of us have ever done. And so, um, so even with the structure thing, that's why I've battled like how much how much do I say there's a bedtime of, of this? I mean, I don't want my kids to stay up till 2 a.m. That's not what I'm saying. But just should I, you know, always have the same structure? Or is it one of those days where I'm like, dude, you had a rough day. Go sleep in. It'll feel good. Because, you know, really, rest is good for us. There's days I just need a nap or I just need a walk or I just want to sit in my closet with a candy bar. Whatever it is, you know, like I think it's okay yeah. to have that moment. And then, and then, Holy Spirit is awesome and helps rejuvenate us and help us uh, step in and then you do it and then you go in and you be there for them and you just realize that you know I, I think our journey imagine being a young person right now I yeah. think you know we have tools as adults and not even all of the tools mm -hmm. but we have some tools and kids are learning you know there's yeah. hormones involved in our house there's you know different different shifting that way and I think yeah. it's okay to not always be okay and it's okay that some days are structured and some days aren't yeah so, that's, good. that's so good Adrian I think you know one of the things too Cynthia also put this on the chat I was going to say you know this is also a great time for us to learn those unique gifts that we might not have realized that our kids had um, I remember when I you know tried attempted to homeschool my kids for two years, which was not a good idea, but I pressed on through anyway. Um, and my daughter would get up in the middle of lessons and like walk around and I'd be like, where are you going? Like, what is happening right now? Like why, you know, sit down because my learning style is very much, I'm going to sit there. I love academics. You know, I'm going to listen. I'm going to soak in. I'm going to take notes. Not my daughter at all. You know, she's like flipping and doing creative things. And I'm just, so I had to learn that about my dad. No idea that that's actually a learning style um, of, you know, her that I had no idea about. I also learned, you know, when I was homeschooling that my son is an incredible writer, you know? And
And so I feel like there's these blessings that we're seeing like, oh, you know, I didn't realize that you thought that way. Or I didn't realize that you processed that way. Adrian, we were talking earlier too about the way that our kids process. It might not be conventional, but they figure it out a different way. And I think that in at least public schools, sometimes it can be um, very emotionally exhausting for the teachers because they're one teacher with 20 plus kids. They can't give every kid, you know, individualized attention, but what a blessing that our kids actually can get that individualized attention from us now. So what are some things that maybe you ladies have learned or you've seen about your kids that maybe it surprised you, something that you didn't know? Avery's like, I've been homeschooling, so I have no surprises. <laughs> no, but I, well, on the flip side, real quick, I will say that there, I know there are parents right now that can't give them all the 100% attention because that was just a quick moment to say, I know there are people that are responsible for businesses, responsible for keeping up with yeah. whatever they need to do, trying to work from home, and there's a whole other strain going on there. So I could certainly go down the road where currently right now I am in the season where I do, like my best efforts can actually go fully to figuring out the home management and the children. That doesn't mean it's not interrupted. That doesn't mean it's easy. It doesn't mean I'm exhausted. But speaking to the person in the season right now that is um, – trying to um, diversify themselves and be on the computer or be on a Zoom call and try to keep their toddler quiet and all of that. So I, I recognize those challenges too. But when we hit our low moments, which as of under 24 hours ago, Monday morning, we did um, <laughs> just doing a simple math lesson that I thought was simple. I know my older um, child who certainly I thought could be more a little more independent he he thrives on the one-on-one -on -one education that's why I'm still homeschooling him and he needs that right next to him all the time and we had some really low moments and I have learned that when my kid is emotionally not in a good space he is not receptive mm. and I am not though my wiring is to push hard and get through it and knock off the checklist that's my wiring he will not benefit. So we break. And um, Joel looks at me like, why, why? Just keep, keep going, keep doing you know. But he's start to recognize as well where he just, I'm like, go take a lap, go read a book, <laughs> go draw something, go do something and we'll regroup. And now I'll hand you a calculator and we'll work on that space. Another, we'll find a new way to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Because trying to plow through, I think ultimately we've got to recognize the condition and the environment and the emotional stability more so than than the taskmaster accomplishing the lesson um, and checking it off. Yeah. And I think that's what our kids will remember most too, is how they feel, not what they accomplished mm -hmm. or the work that they turned in. Mm -hmm. that's so good. take a breather, take yeah. a stop, take a lap. I don't know. I think to piggyback on what you're saying, Brittany just put in the chat, you know, how do you deal with kids who have different personalities than you? Like she's type A, her child is type B. So, the, you know, that's real, right? You're like, okay, I'm in charge because I'm the mom. Um, but the kid is not necessarily um, connecting to your personality type. And I think that obviously when our kids were at school all day, that wasn't so much of a problem. But now they're in Very evident now. every day, all day. Um, but I love what you brought out that, you know, everyone isn't able to dedicate 100% of their time to their children or to their schooling because maybe they're working or they're running a business or they're taking care of loved ones or whatever. So I just think over and over, we can't say it enough to give yourself grace and do what works for you. Um, I don't think there should be any mom guilt or parent shame or whatever. Um, if you have to bring in somebody to help, if you have to, you know, get somebody on a Zoom call and say, I don't understand. I had to do that last week with Corey. You know, he's in algebra. Um, I haven't done algebra in God knows how many years. And I was, I'm not a math person anyway. So, you know, he's showing me his little lesson. I'm like, yeah, I've got nothing. So I had to hop on a Zoom call with our wonderful Laren Gables, who is our worship leader slash math tutor now. Um, and I'm like, girl, you got to get on zoom with him because he's talking about dilations and transformations and I'm feeling this is either labor and delivery or someone's getting saved okay um, but no this is math and so I'm like I don't know what this is and so whatever it is if you need Avery you were talking earlier about YouTube can you tell us a little bit about because I didn't know that you could like do this oh if you get in any roadblocks I think particularly math but anything else grammar adverbs adjectives nouns 
pronouns, all the things, YouTube. Just Google in the simple word, put it in. Like just long division, simple long division. Although who knows how the school, schools teach all different ways of how to do these things. But like I found a great YouTube, Math Antics. He's fantastic. In five minutes, he's very clear. He's visual. And I swear I so told my son the exact same things. But I give him five minutes on this YouTube thing, and it's like a light bulb came on. And then we just regroup, and we go back, and it was different. He's like, oh, that was great. And you know, so there are, like you said, tools and resources. And I think part of it is us navigating, grabbing those tools, using them. And we need a plan, you know, making a plan to figure it out. But, um, but YouTube is fantastic mm -hmm. for any hiccups. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you can't access the Zoom calls of the teachers right away or whatever it is. Yeah. Well, Kelly, I know you've got kids that are kind of like stair steppers, right? Or very close in age. How are you, and anybody can answer this too, but how are you dealing with the bickering? Like we would all love to sit here and smile and say, our children love each other all the time. And you know, they have the joy of the Lord. And when they get out of line, we just quote scriptures, but that is not reality. So, so Kelly or My anybody, never like, I don't know what you're talking about. No, just kidding. What just do you kidding. do other than locking them in the closet? Um, what do you do? How do you help them deal? Um, so I think there's two things. I think when my kids get in a spat, um, Either it's a time to kind of everybody's been together all day long and it might just be something as simple as they need a break. They physically need to be apart from each other. True. And that means sending one kid outside and the other kid to their room and just let's take, let's take some downtime. And um, I think the other thing is it's, it can also be an opportunity to walk through conflict management. Now, I don't micromanage my kids. Like, there are some things where I'm like, that's tattling. Y'all need to go and work this out between yourselves. But I think it's – we've also had lots of opportunities uh, to work through owning something when you offend someone. You know, I tell my kids, you know, if your brother hits you – um, he, you know, he's going to own his part, but you need to own your part. You know, even if you feel like you only did 15% wrong in this conflict, own it and then name it. You know, I'm sorry that I threw your Lego creation on the ground. And I know they probably roll their eyes at me every time I make them do this, but, um, I think it's a really helpful skill. And that's something we can even be training our kids in is when you're in conflict, how do you walk that out? Um, because when we're all together all the time, there is going to be conflict. <laughs> I mean, that's just the way it is. And when we're all home. So, um, yeah, I feel like it's also given us a lot of time to, to think through what the narrative of our family is. I've been thinking about this a lot. Like, what am I teaching my kids about how they're to relate to their family? That's good. Um, you know, uh, Pastor Rhonda mentioned this the other day that she would tell her kids, the, you know, your brothers and your sister, they're going to be around you. You know, you're going to know them your whole life. And when you, you know, are on your deathbed, they'll probably be the ones that are nearby. And so I've really been thinking about that and kind of starting to really teach my kids that the importance of family. And I mean, you know, it's a daily thing. My kids are almost six up to 13. So, um, you know, I think it's something we're all dealing with. But I think it can be the, you know, looking at the practical elements like, okay, we just need a break. You yeah. need to go take a nap. You need to go ride your bike. And I think that's another gift of the season has been like, we can become a student of our children. I feel like I'm getting to know my children in a whole new way, like, because we are together all the time. It's not even like summer vacation where someone's going to a play date or someone's going, you know, here or there, like we are together. <laughs> and I feel like I've seen, um, I've just seen them in a different way. I feel like I've gotten to know the way they handle conflict more. And I think honoring the way each child is wired. Like last, yesterday, it was a long, long day. And by the end of the day, I was ready for a break. And um, I said, okay, let's, we're going to go for a, a walk. Let's just go for a walk in the neighborhood. And my oldest, he wanted to stay home and, and read. And I kind of was wrestling with like, what? he needs to go outside. He'd been outside earlier. And then I thought, you know what? Like that is what he needs right now. He needs to decompress he needs to just read a book and just sit in his bed and nobody's touching him or bothering mm -hmm. him. And I get it. I get it. Yeah. So I think, I think, you know, to the question also about what do you do if you're wired totally differently than your child? I think, you know, there's a time to push through and get what you need to get done. But then I think there's also, um, I think it's also important that we honor who our children are as individuals. And if they need something different and if they're wired differently than we are, that's okay, you know. Um, so I let him stay home and read a book. I went for a walk with the other kids, and he was happy as a clam when I got back. It was like, you know, it just, it helped. Yeah. So. 
That's so good. And I just want to remind you on Facebook to put your questions in because we do want to be able to answer the questions or challenges or um, maybe suggestions. Maybe you've got some suggestions for other parents or resources that you found helpful. Um, does anybody else want to talk about that, though? Like, how are you handling the bickering of the children in this season? Yeah, I mean, in agreement, I think we're tackling it an argument at a time. And so um, it, some days I it's for me, honestly, it's you two. You guys work that out. That's yeah. not really my problem. Uh, which is really real life sometimes. And so, and then there are times where I feel like it is time to sit down and like work it out. I have found a lot of the time, what has been really helpful is getting to what they're really getting at. And so, cause again, half the time when I'm irritable with my children, it really has nothing to do with them. I'm just, I'm tired or I'm hungry or, you know, or it's just, we've all been together a really long time. And so again, I have to go back to my own thoughts and feelings and emotions and imagine they have to somewhat be experiencing the same things. And so I found a lot of times in conflict, you know, we had a situation, I don't know which day, because probably at least one every day, but there was a day at some point recently where there was a conflict and, you know, we got down to it. One of mine, after discussing, broke down in tears and was like, I just miss my friends. And so it really had nothing to do with the sibling because that's uh, unfortunately and fortunately their friends right now is the three of them, which is beautiful and messy at the same time. And so at the end of the day, it really had nothing to do with the other sibling. It just had to do with, I don't have my friends and I want my friends. And so I think we can take these opportunities to also allow them to figure out what they're feeling and put words to it. Even uh, we've been doing um, New Life at two o'clock on Mondays has had a, a tween um, girls uh, Zoom meeting with Rachel Watkins. And that's actually even something they addressed yesterday, which was so um, timely. It was just, what are we feeling right now? Like, you know, and it's okay to have feelings. And so I have found that those moments have brought those things out where we've been able to address like how we're feeling and what we do with those things and how do we go to the Lord with those things? How, you know, how do we just, do we just need sleep? Do we just need fresh air? Do we, do we need exercise? You know, what, what is it getting, how can I readjust my thoughts, you know, and, and how can I rewire this moment? And so I feel like a lot of those moments have come out of the bickering really. Yeah. <laughs> so no, that's such a good point. And that's a perfect segue into, you know, this next conversation about how are you helping your kids to engage with their friends? You know, um, um, I know little Zeke doesn't have friends yet. He's only six months old. But, you know, what are you doing to help your kids to still feel connected to their little crew that they have? Do you want to share anything? Well, it's been, it, it's kind of, it's been tricky. I, I am thankful for Zoom calls with the classes that my older sons have. But, again, we have six months, two years old and then five and um, almost eight. So, and so I am your friend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's tricky. You know, it's, yeah. it's, I think, I think I, I'm remembering too where it is, it's a pandemic. It's a crisis. It's something that hasn't been, you know, that we didn't ask for. And so it causes you to, to stop and think like, what is, what's essential, what, like, what do I, if it's too, if it's unbearable to add one more thing sometimes, um, like, you know, um, not, I don't want to say being intentional with connecting with others, but, um, you know, maybe the class Zoom call is enough for, yeah. for this week. And so I honestly, I haven't, because they're so little, I haven't um, gone out of my way to, to have them connected, yeah. but and um, I don't blame you for that. I think that I, I think adding we got at this point we got to decide what can we add and right. what what do we focus our attention and, and energies on. Um, I, you know, I think for one, my ten year old, um, we found something and it was the sweetest moment. But um, his friend, actually, his dear friend, is all the way out in a different part of the country, <laughs> out in Hawaii, and we've had to actually start to be creative the last 10 months. Um, but in this situation, what we figured out is he sets up a FaceTime and they both play Legos oh, that's and sweet. they just, and they actually, I'll walk in the room and there's no talking going on. Aww. They're just fishing through their Legos and, and then they'll show something, you know, things. And, um, I put him, I put him to bed the other night and he just had this big grin on his face. And he was like, 
I feel like I was with him. Aww. Like I could hear her, the Legos on the other side of the FaceTime and I just, I felt close. And it was just a, you know, there's thing. Now that was a 10 year old sweet moment. I'm sure it's different teenagers, different conversations. Eight year olds, you know, they're not having real conversations. They're like, look at my bed and look at the, you know, all these things. So um, I think it's just different. And grandparents, I, I, I see the back ends are doing like, of course they're creative and doing all these fun, card games and really fun. So we haven't been nearly as creative with grandparents, but we just keep in touch with them. Um, so that is that, that's what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. I've just been so grateful for technology during this season. Cause it, again, the zoom calls, uh, mine all have an electronic at some somewhere where they can FaceTime friends or yeah. those kind of things. So it's, it's, it has been interesting kind of like you're saying with the Legos. I mean, I walked in the other day and my youngest is on the phone with her friend and they're both making their sandwiches together for lunch. So it's just on the, on the counter and they're just, you know, talking while they make their lunches and what are you eating? And oh yeah, my dog this. And you know, and so it's, it feels, it's, you no, know, it is not the same as being in the same room, but I think it is helping, um, to fill some of that time. So I'm super grateful for that. Um, I do think it's okay to be bored too, though. Like that's another thing that's been interesting is I realize in my, in my normalcy, we don't have a lot of margin yes. and we don't sit very well. Yes. And so, and I think that's probably a, a lot of people. And so there has been moments where I've, I've really felt like, you know what, it's okay to be bored for a minute. And like that we don't have to think something up all of the time and, you know, scroll through our Pinterest, hoping that we have enough supplies to do something remotely, you know, interesting and exciting that our kids will engage in. And so I don't think they should be bored the whole time because again, this is a unique scenario where they need life right now. And so, but I do think it's okay to have moments of just, nothing. yeah, I think yeah. I've heard so, too. So. I, I forget where, but I think I saw somewhere that, boredom is the doorway to creativity it you know is. it yeah. opens up their imagination it's it's forcing them to engage in a different um in a different way so yeah. i've yeah. been repeating this to my children boredom is that's healthy. good hashtag it's that's good a great quote good. becca yeah. um no i love that i think that you know when we do this is this is a pandemic like you know like we have to remind ourselves of that and remind our children that we are in a, the middle of a pandemic it's different this isn't going to feel normal you're going to feel bored you're going to have fears you know and i think for us as parents to be able to talk about our kids fears um kids aren't always going to come up to you and say i am afraid of blah 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 but you might see it in their play you know especially for the littles you might see that they're um that with their playing with their toys or whatever that their their toys are afraid or um if they're constantly asking you a whole bunch of questions like we don't really watch the news a lot in our house um that's just something that works for us but um but i'll notice that like one of my kids will, will ask like you know how many people died today you know it, you know what, what's going on in this state uh when are we going to open up virginia again like he'll ask me those questions and so that's showing me okay there's some fear going on in there that I need to talk to him about. We need to pray through that together. Um, my mom, I was actually on the phone with my mom the other day and she was saying, you know, this is such a great time for those of us who have kids in public school. We're always like, you know, they need to bring Jesus back in the school, right? And it's like, what a great time to bring Jesus back in the school. Um, so I've really been enjoying having these nightly devotions with our kids. Um, I'm not going to sit here on Facebook Live and lie to you and tell you that we were doing that every single night before because that is not true. Um, but in this season, we have been doing that every night and we've been able to say, not only are we going to bring Jesus into the school, but we're going to bring him into to the situation um, that we're in right now. And so, you know, even my daughter, I hope, you know, I don't want to embarrass her on Facebook Live, but like she'll, you know, be like, is it, is it story time pretty much? You know, like, when are we going to do our devotions? Um, and so we're reading through um, Second Samuel right now. So we started in First Samuel. We're talking all about the life of David and all the things, and it's so relatable to them. And I feel like, wow, like this is, this time is so precious. And I know it sounds so cliche, um, but like our kids grow up so fast. And so even though it is a stressful time and even though there are challenges, like we have to just treasure this beautiful time that we have with our kids and bring the Lord into, you know, everyday life with our kids. How have you ladies been able to do that in your homes? Well, my um, it's funny because my oldest son this this the previous week asked me just with this confused look, mom. Um, is learning more important than God? Mm. And I just kind of, I had to pause because, you know, it's really become the drive and focus right now in this season, being at home. And so um, I just had to tell him, um, we, you know, God is, God has preeminence. God is first, but 
um, we can use learning to learn about God. We can, you can learn to read. You read your Bible. You um, learn to write. You can, you can share the gospel. You can express yourself. And um, I think f- for me, I had to stop and think, it is so important for me to, um, to, to be the expression of, of, this, of his love during this season too, just because there's, during this pandemic, there's so many different areas that, um, that are pulling their, I mean, there's schooling, there's, there's different things. And so uh, it's easy for me to lose my temper or to, um, to walk in, you know, to walk in lack of patience. And, and so just being an expression of his love during this time, um, I think is really important. It's good. I think, um, in general, like, um, we, we tend to start our day together. Like, even though that meaning we are doing things together in the sense of we do a Bible reading, some prayer reading, because I have the homeschool element, we're all learning a folk song and we're all learning a hymn. Mm -hmm on YouTube. Let me, apparently I do YouTube a lot. Don't worry, teachers, educators. I don't use that solely to educate my children. However, um, but, um, if I found that we went straight to our individual tasks or took off with the day and that didn't happen, we pull it back and we reset. And that has helped with, um, just using as a guide. So, and then we do like devotions at night too, but it has helped to start our day, like in the couch, in the living room, 15 minutes or less, trying to keep Cora, my three-year-old, happy in the midst of it, but still doing it. And one of my kids said that was one of their favorite times right now when we went around the table. Um, And so worship music, maybe, in just different areas. Um, And we even learned, we have a piano. Some people have keyboards at their home. But I looked up, there's easy app on Simply Piano, and I learned the A chord, the G chord, the C chord, and (laughs) the F minor chord or something. And we now can play every worship song using our little chords and we're not pianists but one of my child wrote his own little worship song like just because we started just allowing space for some of those things to fight boredom to figure out ways to be a little creative um and not so mommy needed but um so yes let's center our homes around the word and talk about it and pray and regroup because we can (laughs) because it's going to leave. The season's not going to be here forever. And um, though it's trying, we can center that as our anchor and um, let that be what they remember. And maybe those will be new normals for us moving into ne- other seasons if they haven't been. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What about you guys? Um, one fun thing that we did when we, when all this was still kind of fun and you felt like you were on break, like at the beginning part, um, as we decided to start the Bible mini series that came out, I don't know, 2012, 13, 14. And that it was amazing. Like, well, a, it took forever because we kept pushing pause, you know, and it allowed for so many conversations to take place. And it was just a really fun way to kind of go through the scriptures, um, go through the stories, it was movie night, so it was kind of fun. And we literally every night would just sit down and watch another one and sit down and watch another one. Um, so evenings for us tends to be our, our go-to, our gather time, um, when we kind of get to connect on those kind of things. But it was just a really fun, easy, practical thing to do together that allowed for the Lord to really um, stir up a lot of questions. Um, the kids, the things that I didn't even understand that they already knew that was really cool. Like, wow, I didn't even realize you already got that. Sweet. So that was something... Um, Where you know, do you find the mini series? Uh, I think it, it's on mm, Netflix. Well, it maybe? came out on the History Channel. I don't yeah. know if it would be like on History.com or I, probably Netflix. Netflix or Hulu? Yeah. yeah. Not YouTube? No, just saying. Not, oh, it's it's on YouTube. Yes, I'm joking. <laughs> you know, I think also in this time, it's important that we as parents are um, tending to our own walk with the Lord. And it, we've talked yes. about this in MOP sometimes, how sometimes when you have babies, it's it, it can be so all-consuming to just be like, I'm feeding my people, I'm clothing my people, and not take that time to spend time in the presence of the Lord. Mm-hmm. And when we're, our days are lacking structure now, um, but I feel like now more than ever, I can tell a difference when I've spent some time with the Lord, and then I go to be with my family, and when I haven't. And um, my children can attest to that too, but... Um, 
I just feel like that's a really powerful thing. Like I think, I think about myself all day long. I'm like, you know, I'll change the um, thermometer in my house, not the thermometer, the thermostat. And I think about as a parent, we are kind of a thermostat in our home mm-hmm. and we kind of set the temperature. Yes. And um, one scripture yes. that's been coming back to me over and over throughout this whole pandemic is in Pro- Proverbs 14, where it talks about the fear of the Lord is a strong tower and for your children, it will be a refuge. Mm -hmm. And I just have, I don't, that just really has stood out to me in this season that my walk with the Lord, when I am grounded in scripture, when I am finding my peace Mm -hmm. in his presence and not on the news or social media or all of that frenzy, when I find myself rooted and grounded in the Lord, it's a strong refuge for my children. And in doing that, we are setting the thermostat of our, of our home, the peace of our home. That's something Jeff and I talk about a lot, a lot is like, we want to guard the peace of our home. So we're careful about what we let in. Even now, when I think it's really easy to just binge watch everything or just zone out forever. I mean, we need to watch movies and, you know, have a break and stuff, but also just being mindful of the temperature of our home spiritually and, and even like the way we frame things for our children. Like I check in with my kids about once a week. How are y'all doing with this? How are you feeling about the pandemic? And then, and then I kind of frame, I, I want to frame it for them. Like, isn't this an amazing opportunity? We're together. We're never going to have something quite like this again. So I think as parents, that's, an honor that we have. It's a gift that we have to be able to kind of speak over our house, speak over our children, um, what we want to see, what we see God doing in our midst. And it kind of casts a vision for our kids that everything's going to be okay. And even Ruthie, my, my daughter, um, she was running a fever. This was like two weeks ago and she went to bed and Jeff felt like, I think I need to go check on her. He went and checked on her and she, she was really afraid. She she was like shook up because she thought she might have coronavirus Mm. and she just had a little cold. Um, but you know, even in times like that, just kind of like, like you were saying, like checking in with the kids and, um, making sure that they're not absorbing everything that the world is putting out all the fear that is around us. But, um, you know, acknowledging that fear, acknowledging that, yeah, this is a big deal, but God is greater in our midst and letting that be a strong tower for our children. Mm -hmm. All right, ladies. Well, my last question is, I'm totally throwing you a curveball. We did not discuss this, but this is the beauty of life. Um, (laughs) So in your marriages, right? Like I love talking about marriages. And I think that there's some statistic out there that's showing like all of the divorce rate basically increasing because spouses are spending so much time together. They're like, I I didn't want to spend this much time with you. (laughs) Um, How have you, um, and you can be as transparent or not as you want to, but how have you noticed that this is either helped your marriage or what are some things that you're doing different um, in your marriage? For example, because you're together, unless your spouse still works, like my husband's a first responder, so he actually still works. Um, His normal, his life hasn't really changed that much. But if your husband is home with you and you're home more, how has that created a difference in the dynamic of your marriage and how have you been handling that? Let's pray. (laughs) (laughs) I think... um, for me and Jeremy, I mean, I, I spoke earlier about how, you know, laid back I am with time, but we've, we've made sure to keep the one structure is like for bedtime. I'm like, I need my children to go to bed just for that time between me and Jeremy to make sure we're connecting, you know, either we play a game, um, like a board game, or if it's just watching a show, or if it's, you know, talking about my challenges during the day. But um, f- for us, I think, to to make sure that, you know, we're, whereas the kids maybe before we're going to bed at 7, well, now by 8.30, everyone <laughs> must be in, the be- in in their bed just to give us, you know, to make sure we're connecting that way. So. Hmm. No, (laughs) Um, it's not been bad. It's been lovely having um, Joel home more. Um, Certainly when he's home, he's still trying to connect and do the Zooms. And so it's not like he's just home. So I think part of it is, I mean, I'm not in this camp because I've been home, but I could see maybe the mom taking the burden of all the home things for the very first time in the sense of all the things are at home all the time. And then the husband is still responsible to the Zooms and it just doesn't feel 
like the matchup. But I've kind of just tried to protect as much as I can his time when he needs to do that. And I'm not worried about it. Like it's not, there's no comparison. He's doing his thing. I'm doing my thing. When we can tag team, we tag team. It's lovely not having him have commute time or something or just home at 530 and let's just get on the bikes or do something. So there has been a lot of that. I can't say we've been intentional about having like this special little date night once a week or anything at home or done anything super creative for those things. But we have, we watched the Chosen series, Mm -hmm. which is lovely. So that was just fun. And he's probably watched it even more than that if I went to bed. But um, just having regular conversations throughout the day. And it's been really fun feeling like he sees all the things I see Mm -hmm. throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And not just the people, but all the movement of all those things I was talking about. And like, oh, (laughs) yeah. Maybe the flow of this home. Yeah, I could see how that could, you know, change I think stay-at-home moms are for sure hashtag <laughs> winning right now. Because I'm staring at this home all day long, <laughs> yeah. and you're not, and now you are, and now you want to change things too. I see. Yeah, so yeah. it's that's been fun just to laugh about that. But anyway, okay. so, good, good, yeah. Good. Yeah, um, I, for, for Liam, for us, we... We're a unique couple that really, we do better when we have time together than when we don't. So some couples, and neither of them are right or wrong, um, do really well when they're apart and that's just their thing. For us, uh, too much distance is not healthy for us. So we, we need to connect. We really need to, to just sit. Or um, And honestly, in this season, you know, he's still been fairly busy with work and in and out. And some is home, some is, is at the church. Um, you know, right now I'm in the homeschool world trying to take care of the house, whatever that's supposed to look like right now. And, you know, doing those kind of things. So I feel like we've had incredible family time. Like that part has been phenomenal. But I think for us to carve out a couple times has been a little trickier. Um, Our kids are at that age where they don't require sleep. I don't understand. Like, I'm like, go to bed. Like, go to bed. Like, you know, and so, yes, they go to the rooms, but they're still just up and, you know, checking in. And, And so I think for us, I mean, the one thing that we have tried really hard to do that has allowed us just to have, you know, conversations without interruption and is really just go for a walk together. My kids are at the age where they can sit and then we're going to go around the loop um, once or four times, however many times we need to go just so that we can talk and connect. And that's been pretty valuable to us. Um, I would love more of the evening time um, but again, our kids are just outlasting us. So that's been a little <laughs> tricky on that end. Um, but Liam's been very helpful. I mean, when he's home, he he we're, he helps make up for the lacking. So I'm super grateful for that. Um, yeah. For the days I've come undone, he comes swooping in to yeah. save the day. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. I think also just being honest with each other and saying, I need a break so bad right now. There have been many times where after school's done, I'll be like, Jeff, I just need to, can I just, I just need to go for a walk for 20 minutes or I'm just going to go drive or I just need, I'm out, I'm yeah. out, <laughs> you yeah. know, and he'll do the same with me. I just need a break. And I think even just that little thing. And also, um, like I made a big pot of spaghetti last night for dinner. It was nothing fancy, just spaghetti. And the kids were all playing outside and it was done. And I was like, Jeff, let's just Aww. eat dinner together. Yeah. Let's let them keep playing. And so we had like a little date. It was just us and the kids walk, ran and they're like, what? You know, <laughs> y'all are already eating. Yeah. But it was nice to just have well, 15 minutes just to like look at each other's eyeballs and uh, connect. So just yeah. making it work. Absolutely. I think it's so important that we don't neglect that time with our spouses, right? Because like I always tell my kids, I knew your dad before I knew you. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I chose him. Yes, and I, I chose, and I chose him. him. You were an add on. Okay. Um, but yeah, yeah. So like making sure that we, that we protect our marriages during yes. this time. Um, Sean and I are definitely um, loving this time. You know, we found different things that we like love to do together. And like, I love face 10. I forced him to play face 10 with me. Um, he'll be like, okay, I'll play face 10 with you if you do something else and then you have to like make all these bribes and stuff that you have to fulfill later on but that's another that's another conversation for another Facebook but the point is is that we need to make sure that we are stewarding our marriage as well in the midst of all of this because unfortunately sometimes as moms that can be the first thing the husband can kind of get put on the back burner while we're putting so much energy into our kids but we just want to encourage you if you are married to make sure that you take that time um, to be together and to enjoy these times to create great memories together because we're going to look back on this time. I have a sign in my dining room that said these are the days we'll remember and I try to remember that all the time. We'll we'll look back on this and we'll be like that was a great season. So what the enemy meant for evil, God's going to use it for good. Yeah. 
So ladies, I want to tell you, you are fabulous and you all look cute. We were all so excited to like get we dressed got to do up, makeup get, get makeup on, That's put great. some earrings on. So if I know your kids don't tell you you look cute. So I'm going to tell you, <laughs> you look super cute Thanks, today. <laughs> so thank you so much. And thank you all for being with us on this midday today. We appreciate you. We want to encourage you to come back tomorrow at noon for our Wednesday midday. We'll see you next time.